Have you ever been curious about the real faces of Egyptian mummies? Come along and learn how mummification evolved between 4000 BC and the last mummies around 500 AD. We are at the Allard Pearson Museum and you are looking at a mummy from the third intermediate period when you stand in front of this 3000 year old mummy. Try to imagine that the development of mummies began another 3,000 years earlier. Pre-dynastic Egyptians who lived near present-day El Baldari discovered, when they buried their dead in the desert, that their bodily fluids were absorbed by the heat and both their skin and hair were well preserved. The first mummies were born. The most famous natural mummies are the Gebeline mummies in the British Museum. To date, these are one of the best preserved and oldest Egyptian mummies ever found. Around 3100 BC, the Egyptians discovered that coating these bodies with resin and wrapping them in linen improved the preservation of the bodies. It didn't take long for them to also discover that wooden coffins better protected the bodies from weathering. So our current coffin is an Egyptian invention. During the 4th dynasty, mummification had developed further and it became a medical profession when it was discovered that the rapid removal of the liver, lungs and stomach prevents decay from the body. Each of the organs was tied separately in linen and was placed in so-called canopic jars next to the sarcophagus. The brains were also removed through the nose with a special instrument this process is called exubration. So you now know that under Tutankhamun's famous golden mask, there was only an empty skull, which, by the way, had almost perfect teeth. But his brain was never found. Before mummification, Tutankhamun's body was dried in large quantities of dry natron, a mixture of sodium carbonate and chloride. During the 11th dynasty, it was discovered that this prevented the skin from hardening and darkening. A turpentine-like resin was even injected into the anus to dissolve the organs and to extract them. Mummification had reached a state of perfection. We have arrived at the time of our mummy, who was a priest to the supreme god Omen and was found in a secret chamber of the temple of Queen Hatshepsut. In this adjacent mummy, you can see that the bandaging and decoration had become increasingly refined. The entire mummification process, in which each limb and head was wrapped separately, took 70 days at that time. Another thousand years later, mummies became even more beautiful when Egypt became a Roman province after the later Emperor Augustus had defeated Queen Cleopatra. The Romans used their painting skills to literally give mummies faces. These mummy portraits, mainly found near the city of Fayum, were intended to allow the spirit of the dead to find its own body. 2,000 years later, these sometimes photorealistic paintings give us a unique view of what ordinary Egyptians and Romans look like. Combining the paintings, skull structure and modern DNA techniques, science is increasingly successful in bringing antiquity to life and reconstructing the faces of mummies, such as this girl in the Allard Pearson Museum. This is where the 6,000-year-long story of the Egyptian mummies ends. What do you think? Will our bodies still be around in 6,000 years and be studied by our posterity? Thanks for watching and see you again in one of our next videos.